Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Pat just a mighty mix spanner as you can hear I am indeed excited This is pretty much the case because I don't really know the reason I'm just excited but just cause Well, I did spend most of today's time watching Senior Shida and Dangerous Boys Yes, I'm a little bit ashamed that I didn't finish watching the series just yet I was too focused on watching a lot of our stuff Oh, sorry, I just dropped something and I need to pick it up Okay <laughs> And also, yeah, it was nice finding out that apparently I'm also not the only pervert out there. <laughs> I know how it sounds, but actually, yeah, looking at the pervert side of some of the social members, it kind of makes me giggle a little bit. <laughs> anyway, how about we go straight into the game? So, peace offered by Shredden, that's fine. Shredden, by the way, is another name for United Empire for those guys who are cool and bought the deluxe edition. Seriously, if you are going to back this game, why not buy the deluxe edition? I mean, I, if I, hopefully I will be, if I am able to publish my book soon enough, then I am going to buy, you know, as I, as I promised, I am going to give away a copy of Endless Space, at least one, maybe more, it depends on my fundings at the time. But, well, since I am kind of cheap, I am probably only going to give away the started copy of Ender Space, but if you're buying it yourself, why not go for those, I don't know, two euros more and get the Lux Edition? I have no idea why not. Anyway, how about we just get straight into the game. I did notice something rather strange. Oh, yes, I was sending those guys over here to fight the pirates. Shouldn't be a problem, only a single pirate ship over there. This will be an easy as pie engagement. And those five guys can stay right over here. As I said, my plans for the future for the United Emperor are to actually start a war with them just to make things a little bit more interesting. Now, something I realized that could help me quite significantly is to actually buy a secondary hero, and this would be this guy. Unfortunately, he does cause a lot of dust, but he would be able to help me solve my dust problem because as you may or may not remember, the faction trait that I have is Dust Impaired, that actually doesn't affect me at all at this point, but Dust Staffed and... Well, uh, oh, here we are. Unlucky Colonies, minus 10% dust production on a system. This affects every system I have, and this is the reason why I struggle so much having... Well, not having any dust whatsoever. Well, I do have some reserves, but they're not nearly high enough. So what I'm going to do here is actually increase the... Increase the... What's it called? Tax rate as high as possible without any system going unhappy, so this is the go-to option for me right now, 35%. It's not optimal because my faction trait does uh, encourage me to go for as low tax as possible, but because of my other trait, I do kind of have to make money, and this is how I'm going to try and make it for the time being. Is there anything else that I was that I was supposed to mention after starting this video? Because I don't really remember. Quite frankly, I do have a short memory when it comes to my own videos. Whenever I watch somebody else's playthroughs, let's plays, or instruction videos or whatever, I cannot believe that they forget stuff so quickly. I mean, it's from part to time they they seem to forget everything, and I'm like, guys, you just did it, and then I realize that I do the same very same mistake they do, which is. Kinda embarrassing, but <laughs> I guess it kind of makes sense because whenever you are doing those view casts, open borders. Sure, why not? I got every single system I want, so I might as well open borders with you. But anyway, what I wanted to say is that when you want, when you're making any video cast, then you have to keep in mind that you have to keep your fans entertained. So, for example, if I were to play as I usually do, then I would have to read this entire text very slowly, carefully, and just think into it, laugh at it, maybe, possibly, if it's funny or not, or if it's not, then I would probably laugh not, whatever. So those are the things I usually do when I play video games, right? And this is what I did when I, start, when I started playing Endless Space, that allowed me to gain a really reasonable amount of knowledge of the game, and thus it allowed me to actually... Why are I... Oh, the stupid thingy running away. Oh, well, I have to try and catch him one day, but anyway... This gave me this knowledge that I can now share with you, and so on and so forth, but now I have to try and make myself not do this anymore, simply because, well, it's not as entertaining to watch as you may think. You may be like, oh, but I want to read the text as well. Trust me, you will not after a couple of videos. And even if you do, to begin with, then you are definitely in the minority. By the way, speaking of minority, I just noticed something very, very sad indeed. 
I lost my only female subscriber. Actually, she wasn't even a subscriber, but I just checked that there was this female, supposedly, middle-aged woman anyway, uh, who was actually watching my videos on a day-to-day -day basis and she doesn't anymore. Last time I checked, she was watching them like a month ago or something and from now on she doesn't, so apparently I'm not longer entertaining to the few more bunch of gamers, the few of them that there are there. <laughs> so yeah, that just happened, unfortunately. But I still have you guys, that I value way less than any female fans. Don't take it too personally, I simply do kinda hate males. I'm sorry. Not my... yeah, I kinda do hate. That's, there's nothing more to add to that. I guess it... well... It is a phobia, per se, on a very... Uh, really mild and timid phobia, but nevertheless, I guess it could be called a sickness, so I'm excused to hate males? Maybe? I know, I think I'm just trying to make myself feel better when I offend every single one of you because I know that 100% of my fanbase right now are indeed males. And there are some of you are girls that are afraid, for whatever reason that I don't understand, to admit that are girls indeed. What happens more often is that actually guys pretend to be girls, which is way more disgusting, to be honest. Anyway, as you can see, I am trying to have a battle with pirates indeed. Now, the problem with this is that I am severely outnumbered. Uh, AKA, okay, I have only six a single ship deep uh, pirates, have three of them. Fortunately, I do have rockets, they have no flak defenses, and I'm a sniper, so I get all the hits necessary to deal damage to this ship. Unfortunately, it's not nearly close enough to actually be able to kill it up. Look at it, it's, I find it kind of funny because we both are kind of mirroring our battle cuts so far. <laughs> So, it's kind of enjoyable and funny to watch, but it looks like my Jessica is actually not going to make it and indeed withstand the firepower of the pirates. I think it might go down within this turn, maybe in the next. By the way, see how it goes. I'll go with the slightly lower sound effects and unfortunately it goes one to one on Meno y Meno, whatever it's supposed to call it, from Deus Ex reference, whatever. Which could be reasonable considering... No, it's not reasonable, no acceptable, not by my standards. Anyway, I wanted to wipe those guys out. Apparently a single ship was not going to cut it, unfortunately. But I do, I do still have Arya on its place to replace And then we'll see how she does. Especially now that there are only two enemy pirate ships instead of three. Now keep in mind, she does have the same HP and tonnage as the other ship, Jessica, that I just lost. However... This is Arya, so she's way more awesome by definition, right? Right? Yeah, I thought you said, you said so. So, I believe this battle should go way better, and it's probable, medium car like Ellie ish that I'll actually be able... <gasps> oh, rockets! <laughs> I'm sorry. That I'll be able to make it through this battle. Maybe not unharmed, but I'll at least be able to make it through, and maybe possibly also take down both of the enemy ships. Now they do have quite a lot of kinetics installed on the ship and I am taking a quite a bit of pounding more than the last time but I did was able but I was able indeed to take out one of the enemy ships in a single salvo. That's something that Justica was unable to do. Even with kinetics and rockets, Justicas were able only to damage the enemy pirate ship halfway. Arias on the other hand are way cooler and they are actually able to take out an enemy ship within a single volley, which makes me happy. And is that a Korean hey? Hold on, free camera, uh, move closer, move closer, move closer, move closer, fast, fast, fast. I want to look at the sign. No, where is the ship? Where is the ship? Uh, I could swear that for a split second it had Korean font aka Hanago written on this ship. I'm not sure if you noticed it or not, and it might be something that just looks similar. But still, it looks similar, so I'm kinda interested in it now, and I want to fight more pirates, unfortunately, I'll kill off the last one. Actually, no, there's another one over here. So yeah, unfortunately, I'll have some difficulties getting to this guy, because he's running away, like a cat he is, but because I have way better injuries, I'll be able to catch him sooner than later, fortunately. I'll simply block at lessons, and he will not be able to get away, to go away. You know what I mean. Now, Lessos has finished doing some stuff. First of all, where on earth is Lessos? Oh, I remember the other the actual world. That's right. Monastery, whatever you want to call it. So I do have a single planet colonized that has alien graphic and soon 
Well, maybe that's what Sonic 5 turns it will be maxed out on population. I could go for endothermic extractors, but indeed, this is not what I want to go for. Instead, I will go for small tundra ASAP just because the robot locusts will be able to boost my production by quite a bit. However, first things first, I do need more dust ASAP, so that's precisely what I'm going to go for. After that, I will probably need the inferior supermarket as well because apparently the approval on this system is running low, which is no big surprise to be quite honest with you because those plants do dread some unhappiness, lack of approval, whatever you want to call it, so it's kind of natural that the people will not love me because of that. And afterwards I will be able to connect Tantra on your single turn, so this is a perfectly scheduled plan that will take me exactly 5 turns and this is exactly when I will be maxed out on population, so I'll be able to avoid stagnation altogether, which is very nice indeed. Now, Scion, I know that you're producing a lot of ships, but do you produce some dust as well? Yes, you do indeed. Now, let me check if Fessia, if this is the same case of Fessia, it is. And I guess, yeah, I guess... Hey, I guess, yeah, I guess. Hello! No, not hello. Hey, yo! Whatever, I really bad at this. But anyway, so I'm in to try to make some media call f the f fleet-ish, whatever. I forgot. I mean, I'm not... F I didn't... F Let's be just shut up, okay? It sounds like a much better idea than doing anything else that I would. So, you are making stealth cross section and sees it thingy, so it is closer because I do want to explore this star system and this system and those systems I'm not really too interested in, but I would like to know who are my closest neighbors. So this is kinda important. And thus on Ilium I will actually create. I have no exploitation here, for real, silly bro? Why am I so stupid? I have no idea. But anyway, um, I need the money for another hero, so I'm not gonna speed this up even though I should. But as I wanted to say, I am actually going to go for an investigator too, and I got to put him in front of the queue because I kinda do want and or need to actually get be able to see who on earth am I close to. Whatever, that didn't sound politically approval. Let myself just silence for a second as we go to the, for the next turn and as I take an exit produce because apparently talking is not the best thing I can do today for whatever reason. Anyway, going off topic a little bit, but still. Why are so many people in the K-pop industry going for Japanese market? I mean, I have not... No, actually, I have nothing about at this point against Japanese, and I have nothing against them having both J pop and a lot of K pop stars going into the market. But I want Sonia Shide come back so badly, and I still can't wait for it. And apparently, it's not gonna happen too soon, which makes me a little bit annoyed really annoyed, actually, not a little bit. But I just recently realized that that's not only the case with this group, because now there's another group that is already perform, uh, not performing, but what's the word for that? Uh, I forgot, I forgot. Promoting, that's the word, in Japan heavily is. For a minute, before that it was Rainbow, but it was quite a bit ago, I'm not sure if they haven't ended already. And it, on top of that, it's the, senu the second time Sonya Shade is actually, or the third time, that Sonya Shade is going to promote heavily across the Japan. I mean, cool, right, Japanese fans, all of you, but we want some Sonya Shida too! And I'm so, and you might be like, hey, Pancake, if you love it so much, why don't you do, why don't you go to the concerts? Well, first of all, Korean versions of Sonya uh, music tracks are way better, because they're Korean, and they seriously just sound better. If you would listen to both versions, you would understand that. But what is also important is the fact that it's quite an expensive trip. Now, while making this trip to Korea, I could bear with because I need to go there anyway before I actually move to there to, you know, do some technical stuff, preparing, like, for example, finding a house that I could live in. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of important. But, so yeah, this is a trip that I would do, even though it would cost me heavily, it's still something I have to do regardless. Right now I'm holding back to on it just to wait for the uh, the compact, home, hoping that I would be, make some kind of big concept for it. And what did I want to have for the system? Well, definitely Steam Option Exchange and some more happiness. For now that's good enough. But, well, that's not the same case with Jap Japan, because I don't care too much about Japan at all, so... There is no reason for me to go there because of that. I guess it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? 
course. So, and yet, even though I'm not such a big fan of Japan, I keep saying so, 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 so. So yeah, and they can with so. Why can't I stop it? I don't really know and or uh, care to be quite honest with you, but I do know that I think I have the technology to have diplomatic relationships a little bit more intense with other factions, which is kind of nice. So open border trade, dust trade, technology, star system, etc. etc. Let's see what kind of technology I would like that I wouldn't get too far. Actually, I just realized because I'm supposedly the most advanced technology guy of in here, though I have the least knowledge because. Well, that's probably because I'm focusing. Lead, I'm least focusing on my science production while others probably are focusing heavily on it on it. that's because I have to take care of dust production as well and food for now and later on I'll probably be able to shine for now that is not the case but what technology do I want from others that they actually may have that's a pretty good question so why don't I just go in there try to see who is, who is most likely to borrow me with some decent technology. Now those three guys seem to be liking me by quite a bit. Who of them is going to be the most advanced one? I'm not too sure, but piglets have something to do with cell phones in terms of their origins, so maybe they have something interesting. So let's have a quick look at the technology. Isotope fire fabrication, that's pathetic coal mining. I'm gonna get it real easily as well. Colonization program, where well, this would increase my overall happiness, so this is a possibility. So that's applied Casimir effect. What else? Pew pew scale accelerators. That's not too great. Neural robotics. Weapon deception intelligent tools. I don't think I would. Bodice guild balls. That's actually something I would like to go for. So I'm not sure if I will be able to offer them anything for that because those are quite expensive thingies. But how about I'll try, right? So I cannot really offer them dust. What can what I can offer them though is well I don't really want to give them more weapons, but integrated structures. I only am more advanced in terms of weapons, so that's the only thing I can give them, and apparently nothing would be enough. So <coughs> how about well they have no access to titanium whatsoever, so I could give them some titanium and they should be very happy because of that, but not happy enough. Okay, let's screw them. Actually, maybe just a single technology? No, I'm good for now. <laughs> and I didn't want to get this... Oh, right, they're my friends, per se, for now. So I guess they are allowed to pass through my borders. Even though I didn't make open borders to them, so they're not supposed to be able to pass through. Because I wouldn't be able to pass through... Uh, actually, I would be. Never mind. But they're not supposed to pass through this area that I control. Right, so let's end the turn. Now... The plans for the future in terms of this video that we are watching right now are pretty straightforward. First of all, I will amass as many ships as I can within as little time as possible. Try to get some decent fleet and declare war on United Empire. Hopefully getting some credits with Hisho. Maybe I'll even give this plan to Hisho altogether so that they are even more happy with me and they love me immensely. This would be nice. Now, Ilium finished a bunch of stuff, Citadel as well, so how about we go to those systems? Because I do have to make careful decisions to, as regards to both of them, because, well, the both systems are kind of different with, from each other, but then again, they are both borderline systems. Though Ilium does have a little bit bigger uh, strategic uh, importance than any other system, because it is guarding my way to the homo system that I have. Citadel not so much though, still I kinda value it a little, quite a bit. So what I'm going to go, well obviously I need to get dust. Also, this science is going to be nice, and I'm going to go this, this, this. That seems relatively nice ish Though I do need this extreme option exchange as far as possible. And besides, it boosts not only dust, but also science, so it's kinda a win-win scenario. As I can see, it's two dust, four science per treaty. It will increase, increase, increase if I am able to make it increase. Indeed, that's kind of logical conclusion, but it's actually the case. So yeah, I'm just supposed to sit tight and let the money and science come through. Now those are the sowers. We have an open border treaty with each other, so I can just keep exploring this area. But I don't really need to because. Well, I know there are friendlies. Then again, each system I discover is another system for, with which I could trade. So I do want to keep exploring this area until I fully explore it so that I can gain a lot of benefits because of that. Now, Ilium is also ready for another research. 
production project, I should say. So what does it need? Not a lot, if I have to be quite honest. It will have some industry potential, maybe, so I could go for harder framing, but since that is not the case just yet, I will instead not go for it because it does cost a uh, dust. You may uh, say to my, yourself, myself, whatever, that two deaths per turn is not too much, but you would be surprised at how big of expense it might be after you think that hey, that's not enough, that's not, uh, that's not a lot, that's not a lot, that's not a lot, and in the end it end up spending bonus 10 dust on a single system if you have... 10 systems, then that's another 100 dust that you're losing just because you bought some upgrades that you will not make great use of just yet. If you want an upgrade, but there's no need to get it now, but for example in 5 turns, then wait. Unless it's going to take a while to construct, obviously, but still, that's pretty much my reasoning behind this, and trust me, I've thought it through. It's kinda logical, though, as well, so, yeah. Now, how many ships can I have within a single fleet sh ships? Seven, I believe, so that's the number I'm going for. And yeah, those five are going to are probably going to sit at my home system, guarding it at all times. <laughs> Sorry uh, for that one, I needed to make a pause because my nose is apparently very itchy for whatever reason. But with every any other ships that I may or may not have in the near future, I will actually move them to the low system and then attack United Empire from there just to make it a little bit more interesting. Also, I can finally afford another hero. Now, this guy is going to be good at both being commander and a copilot. I'm going to hire him now, but since I'll try to make him a copilot from the st uh, straight point on, then I'll have to m hope that in the future I'll get a hero that is actually good at being a fleet admiral, because if I don't, then I'll be in a pretty bad shape, because you do need some kind of admiral at your fleet. However, right now I'm more concerned with lack of dust, so let's see at the most dust production system, and that is silent indeed. How much potential does it have? Well, those are only two planets, but those are both arid and they love the temple finals, they do. So I guess positioning my hero in this system is going to be a relatively nice idea for now. Also, because the system is very productive, I, I, it is making quite a bit of ships, it is going to be very nice for my hero because he's going to be able to level up faster because your hero does gain additional points towards the level, like, uh, level up each time your system produces something. So, uh, that's two, that's another four, so I need one more, okay, basic mathematics, I'm afraid about that, but whatever. I never really liked basic mathematics to begin with, because hey, we have calculators, why on earth should we bother with anything else? Now, the teacher always said to me in primary school that, oh, well, you do not know when the calculator is going to break. It ain't gonna break, have you ever seen a calculator break? I haven't. I mean, you should know the basics of mathematics, obviously, but there is no need to be good at it. You just need to know that when you add a million to a thousand and you get a billion, then there's probably something wrong with your calculator, but aside from that, you just need to distinguish the zeros, that's my personal opinion. Obviously, it's not going to be the case when I move to Korea, because then one of the most difficult, difficult things I'm going to have to face is the change of currency because they have quite a bit, uh, quite a different currency than we do, obviously since most countries have different currencies. Now in Poland we don't use euros, we use uh, Polish złoty. <laughs> well, złoty is an is golden, yeah, that's the direct translation, złoty means golden, so we use goldens. <laughs> that actually sounds kinda awesome, and I like the way our currency is called, but that's pretty much the case, we use golden as our currency. It is cheaper than euros, dollars, uh, uh, why do I say what am I the angry Joe whatever <laughs> but yeah it's cheaper but yeah that's pretty much all to say uh, about it not too much cheaper uh, only like for example free golden right now is roughly one dollar it's difficult to say because it this actually changes quite often and remember the times where free free golden were good enough to buy yourself like two dollars and twenty cents or something, and now it's a little bit worse than that. But you you know the idea. Now I still don't have the fleet strong enough to actually mess with United Empire, so I'm going to wait a little bit more. This is only scouting party, so I don't have to worry about this guy. You, however, need to guide the sisters. So I will be able to intercept the pirates as soon as they come through, and I can end it again. 
Now, I told you about the golden, aka Zlotyk, currency in Poland. Now, there is the other currency called Won that is actually important in Korea. Now, Wons are a little bit more difficult because basically, when you want to buy bread, you need to take a couple thousand Wons with you. So, that's already a couple of zeros that you have to take in mind. So, that's one thing. So, I don't remember the current calls for the one, but I remember that before, after, I don't remember. Somewhere within the time of crisis when Golden was really strong compared to every other currency, including the dollar, so that's when, the dollar, when you could buy a dollar for only 2.2 Golden. So, during that time you could buy a thousand won for roughly, well, 2.2 Golden, actually. So. Pretty much for all of Americans, you can go with an easy translation that a thousand won is more or less a single dollar. Now, why can I can I not use the same way to actually think for myself what I can, how much does anything cost? That's simple. I'm not using dollars on a daily 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 basis, right? So I don't have the feel how much a, uh, like a hundred dollars really is. When you say a hundred golden, then I immediately think that oh, you can buy this, this, and this with this, but it's not quite enough for this. For example, I don't have the same thing with dollars because I'm not experienced with it. And this will be the same case with ones. So I'll not only have to carefully count it so that I know how much it is more or less, but also I will need to. Uh, what's the word for that? Also, I need to take into consideration what I can actually buy with it because it's a different currency, it's a different um, market, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, that's something to take into consideration. Now, as you may have seen, the things that I queued up. First of all, this gives me more sentence, but I'll probably not install this straight away. It does give you a sick bonus in uh, to a sense, but unfortunately, it does cost free dust per improvement, which is quite a bit. However, I do have access to Proto Orchid. Proto Orchids are awesome. You should always get them whenever you can and try to get uh, nanobaronic particles as soon as you can just to be able to get this luxury resource because it's amazing. Now, another thing is extreme metallurgy. It gives you more tonnage on ships and it discovers hexaferrous so you know if you can actually go for advanced containers in the future or not. But even the straight up bonus for tonnage is really, really great. Other things that I went for were obviously most often hide some really significant bonus side on them and you don't have to maintain it aka pay anything for explored moons so that's a great thing to have you only have to pay industry for it no dust whatsoever same thing goes on with anomaly reduction and i do believe i have some anomalies for example swarm port that i could take care of and obviously one last thing is planetary institute set up bonus to dust aka plus four dust on star system amazing especially in early game and we're still technically speaking in early game so that's what I went for and why I went for it as well. Now let my fini my finish ships moving. My ships finish moving, that's what I wanted to say. Now my scout is called Ingris, that's okay. It's, it sounds really familiar, but that's because probably because I play this game a lot. Now I don't play it as a lot as often as I used to before I started recording it. Because right now it feels like man, I could play another game in the background while doing this recording thingy. But I could miss some potentially amazing stuff, right? And <coughs> I can't play to all my heart's content when recording because I have to take a lot of things into consideration. For example, my ability to make a video cast, the hard drive space that I have available, and a lot of other things that are really not to be forgotten about. So I cannot play this game as much as I would actually like to. <coughs> or, rather, or rather, as much as I would. Though it's in this game, it's pretty much in this case, pretty much the same. <coughs> What's wrong with the coughing? Stop it already! Jeez, you're stupid. But anyway, this system is pretty much decked out. In the future, I will. In, well, there is Jadonix that I will have access to, and it gives me well a lot of approval on planet and even more dust. Okay, so I will definitely have to go for it. And Jadonix, I believe, is one of the fingers that I'll be able to get with Nano Baron shooting. Or oh, indeed, yes, that's the case. And no, I will not get Jadonix. How do I get Jade Onyx? Is that this thingy way over there? No, it isn't. So Jade Onyx... Oh, there it is. You need containment fields. Yeah, I forgot that containment fields give you access to all sorts of mineralish 
uh, luxury source high. But still, what is most important is the Proto Orchid. As I said, look at that, it's amazing. Especially in every game. Later on, it, it loses, it kind of loses its effect, but still, it's amazing regardless, so you should keep that in mind. Now, so this system is making, giving me more dust, which makes me a happy panda. Lessus, on the other hand, the other actual world. And you still have an exploitation, I guess you just recently settled up over there, so I guess that kind of makes sense. Tundra, well, you are going for geo industrial plants, there is no real doubt about that. What are you going to go afterwards, though? It's still a question that remains to be answered, and I have to think a, lot, a little bit about it. Well, obviously I need the extreme option exchange, and afterwards I probably will just go for even more science. Any other system? Yes, indeed, there's Lucia. That I call like this on purpose, as I said many times before. So, Lucia, what do you need? Extreme Oxygen Exchange, that's definitely an affirmative. Infinite supermarkets and public private uh, uh, private partnerships. Yeah, pretty much in this in this exact order. Because, as I said, Infinite Supermarkets, it costs dust, but the approval it by itself also gives you dust. So, that's something to take into consideration. And I believe we are good to go on that front. Let me just finish the movement with this fleet. That's all nice and dandy. And how close are we to actually launching an assault on Endless, uh, Endless. <laughs> Yeah, that empire that does not suspect a thing. Oh, poor thingy. Well, there is, there are two areas and another four, so we are almost ready on Fessia. Only one more area to go, and she's already on the way. I guess, yeah, same thing. Within the next turn, we have six, and within the next two turns, we have seven, which is also the fleet that I wanted to take with me to actually attack, which is very nice. I'm not going to queue up more areas because as soon as I get and this upgrade, I'm going to redesign areas so that they, I can use uh, of the, the extra space I get. And this way I will not have to spend too much dust on retrofitting the future ships. Now, let's end the turn. Take some more juice, because hey, why not? I, f I just thought that... What would you do if you were to play a drinking game with my videos? For example, you have to take a, a shot of vodka every time I drink juice. But then again, I don't drink juice too that that often on those casts, so I guess it wouldn't really work all that well. Then again, it could have worked if you drink a drug the exact same amount of vodka as I drink juice. Then you would probably be dead after a single video. Yeah. So. I don't remember, oh yeah, those are just the cards 1.0, so they are pretty crappy in everything they do, and my card also got countered, so it means that I will have a little bit reduced, what's it called? What's it called? Accuracy, but then again, accuracy rate is 5, 15%, uh, mine is increased by 15%, so in the end, my accuracy is just standard issue right now, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'll go for that strategy in the... Never mind, I'll just repair the damage I got. If I got any, and I don't believe this is indeed the case, so it went relatively smooth. Single patch that only has kinetics and nothing else on it is not too much of a threat to just the castle, apparently, even though they are very, very old by now. And you know what? I'm probably going to scrap them. Then again, I could fit them with my defense fleet on Fessia, so that's probably what I'm going to do because it seems reasonable enough. Some of, one of my heroes leveled up, that's the Builder, he's at level 5 already, which is very, very nice. What should I get? Minister of Propaganda? Let me minimize it and have a check. Well, definitely yes, because even though you're, he already has this propaganda thingy, my approval system is still only content, and in the future, when I actually get access to those bad boys, the approval is going to go way lower, so I do indeed need to get even more happiness, so that's precisely what I'm going to go for. Exactly, not precisely. Efficient, efficient schooling is also great, but at this point in this system I need a Minister of, of Propaganda without a word of a doubt. Now, I did finish only nanobaronic particles, so I will need to have to wait a little bit before actually get out, before retrofitting my ships, but I can already send them to a gates here because, well, yeah. Because, well, yeah, well, that was nice. So, Ginsen. First of all, you, you are going to disband, yes. Now, I'm gonna match the two of you. I'm gonna rename you. Yada, yada, yada. Yes, from now on, every single one of my main fleets is going to be called the same, and that's the name for it. I still cannot pronounce it, but who cares? Sorry for that. 
Right, so I will not be able to make it to the guess even a single turn. Well, I guess that happens. It's too bad. I'm not going to really care too much about it. And this Alpha Fleet is just going to take care of guarding Fissia. I do have have this. Oh, okay, uncolonized planet. That kind of makes sense. Meta Ectogen and incense. Yada yada yada. Fessia is good for another production, and obviously I'm going to go for magnetic fuel generators. Afterwards, I just go will go for dust. But as I said, in the next one, actually I will change it. It's just in the case that I have enough production to go for magnetic fuel generators and generate some more dust afterwards, which is a possibility. Nevos, well, you finished second. Oh, Nevos, where are you? Oh, you're this stupid system. Who's that? Are those pirates? No, it's not an emperor. Okay. So, you're completely useless. So, what can I do with you? I can just make you generate myself uh, some more dust and I can actually speed this up, but I need to save this dust for retrofitting my ships. So, I'm not going to do so. Instead, fire rods are good and uh, good as well. So, that's what I'm going to queue up for now. It will change later. Lors, where is Lors? Is it in the front? Yes, it is, as I remembered. So that's the Poland Line uh, system that actually might take a little bit of a bearing in the future because there is United Empire, there are the Hisho, they both will war, so this system is gonna, probably going to take a pounding to itself. So I do need to watch out for that. So I'm going to go for Steph Construction because I have Feeble Warriors, I definitely do need Steph Construction to make me at least a little bit defensive. Not too much, but still, that's something. Afterwards, I'm probably going to go for Infinite Supermarkets to get some of this approval back on. <coughs> and obviously, Xenotron is as actually, I probably will want to have them sooner rather than later. <coughs> Sorry for that one. Actually, it gives me only. Hold on a second! It gives me. Oh, OMG, why is so stupid? It doesn't give me any bonus on Lavas and other stuff like that. So, some systems that I may have bought Xenotron's Idrisons. For might not benefit from them at all. So for example, this system it has Xenotron's adjacent, does it not? Yes, it does, but there is no way to actually benefit from it on this system, is there? No, indeed, there is not. So that's a stupid way to waste money. Scrap, indeed. Well, now at least I saved us, but it was really stupid by me. Now, this is a little bit better. I do have Terran, I do have Arid, and I believe that Xenotron's adjacent then benefit from both, don't they? But they does benefit from Terra and Arid, so this is good. Wasn't there Arid over there as well? No, it was that uh, desert. Okay, Nevos, you are Arid, so that's okay. You, what's that? Oh, okay. Colonial base. It's simply Colonial base is designed so that you actually can are not stagnated every or straight on when you expand the system because usually often when you do so, you have this single planet with no production or food at all. So this is supposed to counter that. Uh, just FYI, a little bit of backstory. Backstory? That is a backstory. Whatever. So, oh, they actually kind of hit me. But so those are arid, so that's not a problem. Servos, what are you? You are Tundra, so you can still benefit from this thing. Lesus, you are Tundra as well. Lucia, you are desert, so you do not benefit from that at all. Let me just triple check that. No desert. Scrap this thingy. Thank you very much. And is there anything else? No, I don't believe there is. So let me just finish the movement with whatever ships I had. Okay, you go over there. Fortunately, I have open border treaty with Source, so I can just f freely explore the entire galaxy arm without any consequences and discover it entirely, which is very, very nice indeed. Now, I'm not sure how much time has actually passed since I started this video, because I tried to use a new me method for counting time that I have. But I'm, unfortunately, because this is the first time I'm using this method, I'm not too sure if it actually works. I have this <laughs> this bad feeling that it might actually no, not, but we'll see how it goes. Now, what do I need to do? This is a good question, because I completely forgot. Oh, wait till next time for the extreme methodology and then redesign the ships. That's what I wanted to do. That's kind of logical, I guess. Logical enough. So, not no, it is so, and again, why am I so stupid? Whatever. <laughs> I didn't really care too much, did I now? Now, this guy does need some more labor because currently he has no labor, and even though I did have him for the dust production, he should have at least a little bit of labor. So, I'm going to give him plus three, that's something, and now he does boost my production of food and industry by 6%. That's not too much, but it's still something. <coughs> now, Axiom Metallurgy has finished, which is very, very nice. You can go away now, and uh, it's got Hexaferrum, and I already have access to it on Lessus 2. 
So this is very nice, it will mean that I will be able to use this amazing upgrade to your ships that you get, that I forgot how that's called, that allows you to carry even more tonnage than usual, and this is very very nice. Indeed, servos. I think I remember where you are, and you are stagnated indeed, so I should do something about that pronto, because I don't want any of my ship, ships systems to be stagnated afterwards let's just go with a little bit more science because that's kind of important as well citadel you are very close to stagnation you will be within three tenths so it might be the time to expand how much will this take oh no first let's go for magnetic fuel generators and then we will uh, go to expand three tenths three tenths that's amazing efficiency that's precisely what i wanted to happen and that's pretty much it for this turn as well Man, that was going by very, very fast indeed. Let's see if I can. First of all, I need to redesign the area ships so that they are more awesome. Now, because it's a destroyer, keep in mind that it can carry more wave in terms of weapon modules. So, this is what I should actually focus on. But first of all, let me take care of those hard kinetics and unstable torpedoes because those things are old. Also, I cannot forget that I do need some more defense modules. I don't. I am not too content about lasers. I don't think anybody has them now, or at least is using them effectively. But I will get a single layer of defense against them, regardless, just in case. So that's one thing. Another, uh, what I'm going, thing that I'm going to go for are extended fuels to take care of those nasty pesky missiles. I'll go for three of them. I already filled a lot of my tonnage, unfortunately, but that's unnecessary evil. Three ultra dense slacks, and how many rockets can I fit in? Three. That's not optimal per se. Um, how to get rid of smart ranges? It's only plus five fleet ship. You know what? That's something to get on my support ship rather than on my main attack ships. So for now, I'll resign from it. I will come back to the idea as soon as I get. The cruiser already up. For now, it would be the only thing to install it together with engines, and this would be a waste of a ship. So, I'll just get with a little bit more rockets and kinetics both. Now, I'm using the excess amount of tonnage. Oh, come on, I would like to at least give you a single more point of tonnage so I can use that for something. Uh, irritating game. Okay, I'll resign from that, and I'll go for. for. There's nothing I really would like to go for, so yeah, I would have to use 12 of that. So I could go for double layered house, but that's stupid. Or two. Actually, is two hard kinetics better than a single ultra than slack? Let me just double check that. Ultra than slack is that four max, two men, three, well, nine projectiles, and that's four project. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just go for four ultra the slacks and four fusion torpedoes because hey, why not? Now those are all war abilities that really benefit the ability with dust warheads because it boosts both your kinetic and missile damage. So this is probably what I'm going to aim for whenever I get the chance to get a hero that is going to command my ships. Now can I retrofit well I can retrofit drastic house, but I don't want to. Now how about areas? I don't quite have the money and I will not ever have the money soon enough, but I will be able to retrofit some of them, and some is better than none, I believe. Four of them, that's not too bad, so I have four fleet, uh, fleet. ships retrofitted, the rest is not, but I can now return with the production, so that's four, five, six, seven, and that's good enough for now. You also, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I can't have to count to not get lost, it's kind of pathetic, but what can I do? And I believe we are good to go, those fleets did, those ships did waste all of the movement on that front, but I'll be able to continue on the journey in the next turn. Now, are you seriously working? I tried something different. Unfortunately, because I did, I can't really check if it's working or not. It should be. Unfortunately, there's no indication to it working or not, so that's the problem. So, anyway, Adaptive Colony is, is here, so I can explore those moons and get rid of the Swamp World, which would be amazing. So that's one thing. Lesos also is doing some stuff. What was I doing on Lesos? I forgot. I apparently did do something, I just forgot what it was. So what do I want for the system now? I definitely do want more science, but I don't believe I actually do need anything else. Though, a bit uh, genetic crop seeding could benefit me quite a bit, because I still have quite a lot of plants left on the system to 
popularis and this would probably speed this process by quite a bit because it does work on tundra it works best on ocean jungle terrain but desert arctic iron and tundra are good as well and we have both desert and tundra and even more desert so that's what i'm going to go for now uh, let's finish the movement for all the fleet ships and other whatnots that wanted to go somewhere you go to Lors, prepare for an invasion you go there as well i said you go oh i already had you selected you go there as well i said go there as well there we go, thank you very much. You just keep going whenever it is you're going. This friendly fleet is going to be really unfriendly soon enough. And is there anything else? Well, I should check my military strength. I'm at the last place, so it might be a little bit difficult. Now let's see what the other race's relationship to the United Empire is, because I might be making a big mistake. Fortunately, it doesn't look like they're at peace with anybody. Now. Pigros used to be suspicious about those guys, but now the, uh, their relationship is improving. Kishio are suspicious about them, so this is very, very nice indeed. And that's pretty much all the relationship there is. So, uh, and Horatia, unfortunately, does look at the start to like those guys, but that's not the case just yet. Me, on the other hand, nobody's suspicious with me, and some fellows apparently look like they are starting to like me more and more as the game progresses. Now, my score is the second lowest, which is. Suboptimal, but I hope to fix that in the near future. How about my fleet production? It's also very low. How about science? It's very low. Generally, I'm losing on all fronts, but I'm 6% diplomatic victory. Ayo, hey, that's nice. Not really. So, let's end the turn. Seriously, are you walking or not? I'm not sure if I should trust you. This sounds like a boyfriend. Or, indeed, newly married couple talking to each other. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so. The sound ships finished moving, you guys can now merge into a single fleet and keep guarding Fessias. Now, you have, you have quite a bit of firepower by now, 1013, then again, a single area has 290, so yeah, that tells you something. <laughs> Excuse me, I had to wipe the drool out of my mouth. Just ask why, I don't know myself. It is a little bit disturbing, but whatever, we'll go with it. Now, I did send two fleets to Rotenev straight away, and we'll see how it goes. Now, can I do anything to make he should try and declare the war on United Empire? Let's have a quick look. Now, we are at peace, and they are net no neutral to towards to me. Minus 12 to, to expansion, but I will not expand ever again, so this is going to probably decrease over time. Plus 15 due to current exchanges. We don't have any exchanges, buddy. Except for the one on planets, so I guess that counts. Long term peace with uh, status, that's nice, but we do have tense uh, frontiers, but they're not too tense, though, so it shouldn't matter all, excuse me, all that much. So, can I do anything for them to attack? I actually don't really uh, remember, but there's an option. No, I think that the only option to make them attack the same faction that I want to attack is to go into alliance with them, which is not the technology I possess yet. Now, let's have a quick look at the technologies they have that they could share with me. <clears throat> I'm sorry, they could give me lasers. Then again, those are just green lasers. I can get the awesome pink one less later. Anti-matter, and no, that isn't something that I couldn't get soon enough. Camouflage offensive retreat, not caring. This is a little bit better. I might actually go for it just for the exchange sake, so that they like me a little bit better, because quite frankly, he should are scary. And yeah, and they are scary. So what can I give them in return? Adaptive colonies. And apparently this deal is very tolerable, so we'll see what they think. It looks nice, and they accepted the offer. So this is nice, we both gained something. Apparently I gained more, a little bit more than they did. But regardless, it should have been still pretty nice indeed. And this upgrade is amazing, so definitely I'm going to go with that. What does it also get? The instance bonuses? I don't get rid I don't really get what this means, but sounds nice enough. Why did you move backwards? Now you didn't. Okay. Okay. You sure you're walking, Croc? I don't know. How much time? I, the problem is, I don't know how much time has passed. Hey, left ship, go away. Capsule, go away. I don't want any capsule. But anyway, I got to. You know what? I remember. I set the timer for 37 minutes. So when I see that it's 22. 37 p.m. then I know that this method isn't working actually so I have to just remember that 
The reason why I went for a different method of counting time to the splitting the video, you're gonna guess it soon enough. If it works, and it may not. Maybe I said something wrong, but honestly, I don't believe this is the case. More probably, this application is just straight up broken. Not said. So, Aurora, I can fix Aurora Gaze? There's something wrong about them? Hold on, what do Aurora Gaze gives? Waves give me? Oh, minus the signs, that would explain something. Okay, so that's something to remember, but first of all, I do need some exploitation on desert. Desert. Desert! And the Temple of Finance seems to benefit greatly from desert, so that's what I'm going to go for. Also, Sion, not Sion. Fessia, you need to take care of the swamps, please. Monserve is also going to be nice. So, I'm going to move you to a little bit higher. It's going to take a while, but I... If it doesn't bug out, seriously, this is something that the devs could fix already. It would be very nice. Maybe it's intended, I don't get why and or how, but maybe it is. Okay, so that's good enough, and other systems will be able to deal with it soon enough. Anyway, however, it is converting dust into industry into dust, and I don't want this to happen quite yet. I do need those two upgrades first. Improvements, upgrades, you know the deal. Sion, well, you are good for now. I guess, yeah, you are not. I do want to have... Strike! Why are they at strike? What happened? Minus is from overpopulation is a problem and expansion is a pro What? It was fine just a moment ago. Hold on a second. What? What? I don't get it. I'll go for zero dust production. But I have no idea what happened over there. It's really mind boggling me. Everything else is fine on other systems. There is nothing wrong about Empire expansion. Maybe it's a bug. I don't see any other reason why this system would be so unhappy with me when it was so happy with me the other turn. And yeah, it just makes no sense whatsoever. I don't get it. So, what enough happened there? And the other system that's affected by it is sound, which is double irritating because, yeah, it just is. What enough? Why are you so unhappy with me? Give me a, a reasonable reason. Expansion as a pro? Guys, you have the same expansion as a pro on all systems. And even the systems with lava are less d uh, disapproved, per se. Minus 10 from overpopulation. Well, I guess 10 from overpopulation and approval, uh, disapproval might be the thing. And there's not much I can do about it, except for endothermic sections, which I will implement in the near future. So maybe that's it. Maybe this is the explanation. It sounds a little bit kinky, though. I don't quite believe it. Well, we are going to just find out soon enough. Now, the Xenotrans agencies, we already learned that it's going to be useless. Those two things, however, will be not. So I'm going to queue them up and I'm ready to start the war. But what time is it? 36. So it still ha isn't certain if the timer thingy is working or not. So I believe we are ready to end up in a rather aggressive note. So let me make one last check. If everybody is not at peace with... Okay, they are. Soares and Amibas might not be too happy with me going on war with United Empire, but you know what? Let's... Oh! That's a cool Amiba hero! I want him! Oh no, they deserve to die. They stole my awesome Amiba hero. They are going to die. There's no doubt about that. Guys, I have very grim news for you. We are at war. So... First of all, let me try and handle something from them. So I promise to pay flat fee, let's say. I don't know how much, but let's say that I pay 150 deaths per turn, and in the return they will give me... That's something I always do in Civilization games. <laughs> in the return they will give me, for example, this thingy. And apparently they are not satisfied. Well, if that's the case, then screw you, I'm just gonna kill you. So, declare war. Thank you very much, you are about to die. Now this hero is so extremely cool, but I wanted to declare fight on you and use my better fleet. I'm sorry for that, I have no idea what's happening. 
But oh well, I guess the, that's my weaker fleet is going to take the major pounding first, but that's okay, it's like they are, I'm using them as a smear shot. It was not an intended use of this fleet, but I guess it will have to do. Now what do I start with my main... What is their main strength? Let's have a quick look. They have missiles, more missiles, even more missiles, and they went full on missiles. So this is probably what I'm going to focus on. Now, first turn is going to be particularly painful for me because missiles are most effective in that turn, and I went for both missiles and kinetics, which they didn't. Unfortunately, they also went for camouflage, which, for whatever understandable reason, did counter my card, and because of that, I'm in some serious trouble right now. They also have more ships than I do, for whatever reason. I don't really get why. And they have better rockets too. Oh man, I'm in a big trouble. Then I get also other ships, I guess. So. <laughs> okay, this was funny. That's why I lack small fleet engagement. Because this is what happens. Everybody gets obliterated. Uh, this was fun. I liked it. So. I just lost this battle, I guess that happens, but okay, whatever. Now I can engage with my stronger fleet. And they are well, apparently for whatever reason we're able to... Uh, what's it called? Not retrofit, but reinforce the fleet that they use in collaboration with their hero. But that's fine. Now I know that they are going to go for camouflage most probably, so weapon disruption not gonna work so much, but short circuit, it is gonna work, but it's still gonna be countered by sabotage. Let's try and drink! And more drink, and more drink. And they didn't go for camouflage! Come on, guys! Be persistent in your decisions. I guess the AI is kinda smart, actually. So it knew well enough not to just copycat its tactic over and over and over again. And apparently, I have the same rocket technology as they do. It's simple, simply, I didn't rid of it all my ships yet. So that's the reason why. Ah! So cute! I love explosions! Now, they still have one ship left. It's actually... Oh, it's a cruiser. That's kind of expensive. Again, they have kinetics as well. This is a problem. They have shield and flag. They have no deflection, though. But it will be able to take out at least one of my ships. Might be able to take out two, depending on the sink of the kinetics. Not that great, because I'm pretty also able to deflect all the damage uh, from them. And I was actually able to take out this guy. Now, let's see if he is able to take out any of my ships. I did take some damage, but I was able to withstand it. So, that's good enough. So even though the, the United Empire is already using cruisers, so far I am able to counteract that by simply being plain awesome. And and the counter method I used is apparently not working at all. So, oh, 23 turns. That's not gonna take longer though. But anyway, that's it for today. It was Punches, the Mighty Mix Bar. If you somehow managed to enjoy my video cast, which yet again is surprisingly decent for my standards, then please like it and subscribe to my channel. Also, please bear in mind that I do enjoy reading any comments that you can send to me. So if you have anything on your tongue, anything whatsoever, then please share it with me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you online.